What's up, soldiers? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Today I have Zaire, or my nickname for him is Polly, with me. Mommy's at work, sister's at work, and you know, when they're at work, he's with me, and we try to make dinner for when they get home. They have something to eat jerk chicken, jerk pork, rice and peas, and a little garlic sauce to drizzle on there. If you are easily offended by the noise a one year old makes, please. This video is not for you. There will be child noises and laughter and trying to talk and all that. So please avoid the video if you're good. All it's going to do is annoy you and, and you're going to have a hate comment. I ain't trying to, to have no hate comments. All right. But anyhow, Polly and me, we're going to go pick up the ingredients, come back home and do our thing. You're going to love this one, man. Are you all ready, puppy? Are we going? Yeah, we're going. All right. Let's bounce, bro. <laughs> Are we ready? You ready? You ready? We ready? We ready? We ready? Jerk chicken, jerk chicken. <laughs> Let's bounce, P. Yeah, I think the cold air and the long walk. Go, oh boy, all tired and sleeping. You sleeping, Polly? Yeah, it's about minus one degree celsius so we're going home now all right and in preparing the meal today we're going to cover three things um i've got two cups of warm water in there and i'm going to go in with a tablespoon of salt and a tablespoon you can use any sugar i like using brown sugar or just golden brown sugar and the reason why and the reason why we started with warm water here is to allow that sugar and that salt to melt. We are creating a brine and the three sort of things we want to cover in this recipe is one, convenience, so stuff you can find straight out of your grocery store, something that's easy to make, two, without lacking flavor, and three, relatively quick, the longest part here, well, you know, we gotta put that, that jerk chicken and that jerk pork to happen in the oven. It will take about an hour, hour and a half, but this part here, you really do need to do this for at least an hour. And I'm gonna be brining the pork chops. To that, I've got some garlic that I just smashed. I've got some parsley. Wish I could say it's fresh out of my garden, but it's winter time here. Spring is around the corner, so soon you'll be seeing fresh herbs. That is some, well, it used to be fresh thyme, but it's starting to dry out in the fridge now. That's gonna go in there as well. I've got some scallion. I'm just going to rip it up. Real caveman today. We ain't really fussing and thing, thing too much. Right? And we want to bruise that up into that warm water. And that brine, you know, that pork chop is easy for it to dry out in the oven. So this brine is going to help maintain the moisture and also add a ton of flavor before we get to the jerk man yeah and due to the style of the video that i'm creating here you'll notice the lighting is off it's not the best lighting and all that i might just didn't have the time to pull out lights plus when i have the lights out mr zaire who is in bed right now he likes to just grab and grab and grab these are different types of pork chops they're about three quarter of an inch thick i wish they were about an inch thick it would have been better because i'm doing these in the oven quite a bit of fat that is cool that's going to just render down and caramelize in the oven different types so you see different cuts of pork chops here now we have that brine to go on there but what i want to do now now ladies and gentlemen this water out of the top here in canada in the winter is very very cold almost ice cold so i'm just topping up the the brine with cold water now because we're not trying to add a hot liquid or a warm liquid to this pork and we're just gonna work that down work that down tuck some of that herbage under and we're gonna set that aside to brine for about an hour but let's prep the chicken now and then we'll move on to the rice and peas I have here four tablespoons of a lovely jerk marinade straight out of a bottle straight out of the grocery store remember we said convenience we're not trying to give ourselves a lot of work to that now here's the thing ladies and gentlemen if you want to make your own 
by all means do so head over to caribbeanpod.com and I have a few recipes on there showing you how to make your own jerk marinade that is three tablespoons of honey this jerk marinade that I'm using is very spicy so I like cutting it with a bit of sweetness I also like adding three tablespoons of olive oil just to thin it down a bit and you'll see how that will become relevant once we start and this is going to be the same thing we were adding to both the pork and the chicken give that a quick little mix again and the other sort of flavor I like adding in here is some crushed pineapple so this can is 398 ml so I used about half of that can in there and that is crushed pineapple again no need to go and buy a pineapple and you know, you really to worry you need to worry about all that simidine but this is what we're gonna end up with here now honey pineapple flavored jerk marinades that simple it, it is that simple now if you like it a bit more spicy like I said this one is very spicy the one that I use and I highly encourage you to go out and support those Caribbean brands um, yeah you got to be from the Caribbean to make a good jerk man oh wait a minute I can get some hate for that but anyhow I like supporting Caribbean brands anyhow it's very spicy but you can certainly go in man and I'm telling you that that pineapple boy mm -mm 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 -mm. Make your own or go out and support a company making jerk marinade. Add more pepper if you want to add some fresh um, scotch bonnet in there. You know, do your thing, man. Got four chicken legs, so we've got a drum with a tie and the sort of back part attached. And in my humble opinion, this is the best cut of chicken for making jerk chicken. Now, if you want to use chicken breast or you want to use chicken wings, by all means, it works. And what I did was I cut out the extra skin and fat on the bottom or, or that I can find. But you really want that skin on there. It's going to do two things for you. It's going to act as a sort of protective barrier when it comes to the heat in the oven. And two, that skin is going to suck in all that flavor from that jerk marinade. And I'm telling you, it's going to be a delight to eat. I'm using a, a solid cookie sheet, a baking tray. I drizzled on some... Ah, uh, some olive oil. No salt, no pepper. This thing here is loaded with all of that. I'm mean, gonna go with a tablespoon, a tablespoon. Yeah, you, you see where I'm going, right? We're just going on with that there. A little extra just for in case the neighbors come by. <laughs> but anyhow, all we're gonna do at this point here now is go in with my hands and I'm gonna work that on the outside and the inside, the underside and just dress up that chicken nicely there make sure now if you want to make some cuts on the, the surface of the chicken you can certainly do that it's going to allow for that jerk marinade to really get deep inside there but i'm on and going that route today so that's all you're doing here now remember ladies and gentlemen i'm using my bare hands word of warning and we've talked about this before on a few occasions this jerk marinade is spicy it means there's scotch bonnet pepper in there. Well, a good jerk marinade will have scotch bonnet pepper in there. Wear gloves, please. Or use a spoon, use tongs, whatever it is you need to do to sort yourself out. And try and get some of these chunks of pineapple on top of the chicken as it roasts off in the oven there. That's going to caramelize and give you some wicked... I've got my pot on a medium flame. And I'm going in with coconut milk. Straight out of a can, again, convenience. But make sure you get a nice rich coconut milk, yeah? So two cups of coconut milk. It's all about seasoning that coconut milk. Now before we add the, uh, the red kidney beans, garlic. That is four, five cloves of garlic that I smashed. I've got some thyme. I've got two scallions that I chopped up. I've got a medium onion that I chopped up. We'll need a good dose of black pepper in there. Yeah, I did say a good dose of black pepper. Give that a stir. We're trying to bring that up to a boil. Another herbal note I like adding in there is some fresh parsley. Let's give it a rough chop. And to give it that earthy, that real Jamaican vibe. Yeah. 
I'm going in with some allspice or pimento berries or allspice berries. This is just the berries that's going to go in there. Now, this will not look like your traditional Jamaican rice and peas, but I'm telling you, you do it this way. Give it a try. Yo, live outside your comfort zone a little bit. Don't question the madness. It's just the flavor you're going to get from this thing here. I am going to bring this up to a boil and let it simmer for five minutes before I continue. Yeah, and I'm just checking in on the guy. Yeah, he's still asleep. As it comes up to a boil, no, your eyes are not deceiving you. I added water to this. So along with the two cups of coconut milk, I added four cups of water because we'll need that much liquid to cook three cups of rice. And I'm using parboiled brown rice. Takes a bit longer than your typical white rice. We need to salt this. So salt. And out of a can again, red kidney beans and these are the, the small ones typically you would make this from scratch usually when I'm making a rice and peas it's usually from scratch but you know there isn't there's no reason why you can't just you know your simplicity but we added all that flavor in there so who wants to complain about oh she using thing from the can and and thing from the bottle a hey, we enhancing it so don't study that aha uh -huh. Scotch bonnet pepper. We're gonna float that baby in there. Ladies and gentlemen, you break it later on, you're running into problems. Why the reason why we're floating it at this point here, you get the flavor from the oils from the skin. You don't get a raw heat. You break it later on, mama yo, you're looking for problems. I man will break it though when I'm eating because I love it fiery like that. Got that lovely summer going for the past 10 minutes or so. One well, two things I want to point out to you later on. Just before you serve it, you want to take all the uh, sprigs of thyme out and you want to see if you can fish out the allspice berries or pimento berries along with the pepper as well, you know. So I'm going to turn up my heat just a little bit more to medium high because what I'm going to do now is add the washed rice. It's been sitting there so that is why it's kind of clumped a little bit to the pot. And to compensate for the loss in heat of the pot, that is why we cranked up the heat. We're gonna give that a stir. And now here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, try not to stir this too much. The more you stir this rice, the more the grains are gonna rub against each other, and that's gonna release the starch, and that is what's gonna give you that sort of sappy or wet or, well, as a matter of fact, my daughters love wet rice and peas, very runny. But we're trying to do it a little bit more dry today. So avoid over stirring it. We just want to give it a nice little turn. Boom, bam. Bring it back up to a ball and then we'll reduce it to a simmer with the lid on and let that cook. So we've got that bubble going now. All I'm going to do is turn down the heat and I'm going to put this lid slightly ajar with just a little bit of a crack there. In my humble opinion, one of the best things you can serve on jerk chicken, jerk pork, even seafood. Whether you do it in the oven, whether you do it on the grill outside, you smoke it, you do it the traditional way, is a good garlic sauce. And that is the Trinbegonian in me. We love garlic sauce, man. So I've got here one cup of mayonnaise to that. Scallion. That is one scallion. You can't have garlic sauce without garlic. Five cloves of garlic. I like a bit of parsley in there. And again, the Trinbegonian in me. Shadow Benny. Just gonna cut off the stems there. Yeah, looking kind of maga and mega or whatever else would, but that is what I man can source right now. If you cannot get shadow benny, I mean, I say go out and check out the the Caribbean as well as the Asian markets. They always tend to have that in there. I'm gonna go in with some salt, some black pepper. They all tend to stock that shadow benny from time to time. If you can't get shadow benny, um, your next best friend is cilantro. I also like a little Dijon mustard in there. That is a teaspoon of Dijon mustard in there. And to pull it all together, you need a bit more liquid. Plus you need an acid to combat all the fat in, in the, uh, the mayonnaise. So the juice of one lemon, I'm just gonna Juice that in there. And speaking about balance, 
I like some honey in there that's gonna pull in that little sweetness and more about balance I have here one bread pepper or one bird's eye pepper or one Thai chili it's gonna give that a little rough chop and that's gonna give it a nice spicy kick so you notice all the lovely things in there I'm gonna add two tablespoons of water just to help break everything down so there we have it you can use a blender you can use a food processor whatever you want to use now here's the thing Zaire is still asleep so I'm not gonna do this on camera I'm gonna go down in the basement and I'm gonna do it off camera kind of thing just so the noise doesn't wake him but you'll see the finished product once I'm done it's been about 23 minutes all the liquid has evaporated this is a clay pot that I'm using so what I'm gonna do is put the lid back on shut off the stove and let this residual heat and the steam continue cooking the rice so lid on shut off the stove completely shut if you want to put a tea cloth or something down first before the lid to keep all that heat in there I would recommend doing that as well well shake shake and there you go one of the best garlic sauce yo fried chicken dip it in there the chicken nuggets the chicken strips all that kind of stuff like that yo this is one of the best thing barbecued meats so what I'm gonna do now is put this in the fridge so it remains big <laughs> yeah the noise you're hearing is Polly Polly's awake now and he's moving around the kitchen here but what I went ahead and did was after I added the jerk marinade to the chicken there, I allowed it to marinate for about half an hour. Then, in between, you'll see I went with scallions and some fresh thyme. The sheet pan, if you want it again, line it with some, some foil if you want to make cleanup easier later on. Into the oven, top, well, the middle rack, 425 degrees. But before you do, I would recommend lightly slowly putting some foil on top of it that's gonna help protect it as it roasts off in the oven there now as far as the pork is concerned you're gonna drain it at this point you can remove all of that stuff from it you can dump it out we don't need it anymore but um, drain it give it a rinse if you want and pat it dry and then on to uh, seasoning it and you know we, we're not going to allow it to marinate to be really jerk marinade but we're gonna straight into the oven yeah my boy is still moving around so I've drained it <clears throat> and typically I know earlier I said get rid of the um, the herbage and the garlic and stuff like that but I, I, I saved it because typically I would dump that out but I'm thinking you know what I'm gonna add that back in here because it's gonna go into the oven no no you don't have to worry about cross-contamination yes the yes baby what's the boy doing I'm trying to film okay yeah I apologize for that <laughs> um, but give it a good rinse so here goes the remaining jerk marinade you know that that honey and that pineapple is in there pineapple and pork is like your know, best friends man so we've got that in there all of that herbage that was used earlier in the brining process no need for salt and pepper or anything else that there is just pure gold what I'm gonna do now <laughs> he's getting a lot I'm sorry um, I'm gonna go in with my hands give that a good mix then I'm gonna tent it with foil into the oven 425 and I'm tenting it because I don't you know we we, we spent all this time um, with, with the brine because we don't want to dry up the pork chops we want them nice and juicy but we want to get caramelization and all that so there's a few steps one step being covered with the foil at this point it's all dressed up now ready for the oven I'm just gonna cover it with the foil as I said into the oven 425 yeah he's pulling show the people what you're doing this guy is just attacking everything I'm doing man he doesn't stop yo what you got there man and quickly before we get to put in the pork in the oven notice that steam is still coming out it maintain a lot of residual heat we are going to remove the pepper and all of these remember, remember we spoke about the thyme the allspice berry I'm gonna go ahead and take all those things out then yo that was covered there for about 20 minutes we're just gonna use a fork and fluff that rice like so any sort of sprigs of thyme you see you can remove it and rice and peas is ready to be served just look at that oi 
Looking good, Saya. Looking good. It's been 45 minutes since the chicken has been in there. So now I'm going to remove the foil off it and it's going to go back uncovered into the oven. It's been half an hour now with the pork chops. We're going to do a few things, a couple things here. We're going to remove the, the foil off it and it's going to go back into the oven. But what I want to do is to move them around a bit. It's going to shrink. That's just natural. It's going to spring up a lot of water. And that's what you're seeing there. And this is why we are uncovering it at this point. Now, if you have a sheet pan, I, yeah, I ran out of sheet pan. It would be better in a sheet pan because you'll get more, more surface. But back into the oven, uncovered now. An hour and 15 minutes in total. And this is what we're left with. Jerk chicken, done in the oven. Yo, real simple, but quite tasty. Now on to the pork. We gotta finish things up. We gotta finish things up. People are coming home from work and they want dinner, you know? An hour and 25 minutes later, and we have the jerk pork all done. So let's recap what we did today. We started off with the rice and peas, and then we prepared the chicken. We prepared that jerk pork. And of course, in between somewhere there, we made that garlic sauce. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. I thank you for your patience with us. Yeah, Polly can be, yeah, that's my nickname for my boy. If you grew up Caribbean, you know, it's always about the nicknames. Um, yeah, he's a handful, but say what, that is my boy. Always a pleasure, yeah? Enjoy.